Hey, welcome back, Wizards. Now, recently I did a comparison of some higher tier headsets. I just really thought people would wanna see how those different headsets compared, particularly when you're dropping like 800 to $1,000. Then I was kind of surprised by this. An absolute ton of you guys requested the same thing, but on the budget side, and I was pretty surprised by how good some of these actually are. And I think you're gonna enjoy how horrible some of these are too. God. There are some bad ones and you're gonna love it. So today we'll be comparing budget headset options to see which ones are the biggest bang for your buck and which ones fall short even at this price tier. Now, as I stated, this is really part two of our headset comparison. I'll put a link up here if you wanna check out how all the big boys actually compare to one another. I'll save you some click time though and show you how they all ranked with the amps in A tier and the Sordens autos and Comtech sixes in B tier. I did swap out those Comtec 6s to Comtec 5s. I do like the 5s a lot better, but I, I still don't think they're wonderfully great. What I do want to find out is if we can still find that same high tier of performance at like a 20th of the price, and I really, I really do think we did find it. I'm going to show you guys. But first, let's take a moment to thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Nocturne Industries. Nocturne is leading night vision innovation with the Daisho Bridge that provides a clean upgrade path from a single monocular to a full featured dual knob setup with individual pod shutoff and IDP stops for each eye. So if you're looking for the smartest way to get started in night vision or just taking your nighttime adventures up a level, Nocturne Industries has you covered. I still wanna try the panning Daisho Bridge version to see how it works with that larger field of view. I'm very curious how that works. Now, night vision is expensive and we all know that, so make sure to use discount code TLDCO to save yourself a few bucks over on the Nocturne website. So big thanks to Nocturne for helping support the channel so we can grab all these headsets for you. Now for everyone's favorite part, I'm just kidding, this part's boring, my biases. For this video, I actually bought all these. I think the only one that I've actually owned was the Walker Slims that I got like 15 years ago. But yeah, otherwise, these are all pretty much brand new. With that, I'm not really emboldened to any of these brands. I think 3M doesn't really like that humans exist, but I'm sure I have some sort of bias, even if it's subconscious. So don't take anything that I say or any other YouTuber says as gospel. Do your own research, as I always tell you, so you can be the most educated consumer possible. I will caveat that and tell you to be careful because I think one of these uh, gets like a 30 to 40% commission. So I don't think YouTubers are being honest at all in their assessment of all these headsets. We'll get to that uh, gem for sure. But first, let's start with one I've actually never used. And I think it's one of the most popular headsets that I've seen used at the range. And that's the Howard Light Impact Sports. I went ahead and got the standard green that I think everyone has, and these have a pretty nice compact profile. Interestingly, I looked at getting a different color, but it was almost twice the cost just for anything besides green, so green it is. We see the top of the headband is like a faux leather pleather type of thing that has an internal bit of metal to keep it spring-loaded, and the tiniest, tiniest bit of cushioning that's hard to even notice. We see the connectors use a push-through style, so you can't really connect these into a helmet like standard contacts, but you can get adapters for like 20 bucks to make these work. So while you could connect these into your headset, I think people would ask a lot of questions. Mostly, I think, I think the question would be, why in the world did you do that? The Impact Sports form factor is nice though, and as I mentioned, they are thin to give the headset an impressive low profile. There are two large speakers on the front of either side that did an, I'd say, average job of cutting wind noise. The battery compartment is covered by this rubber cover to give you something to grip onto. You just push this up and you can swap out the two AAA batteries. The ear cup padding is just, well, it's basic. It feels plasticky with some foam in there somewhere, but uh, nothing that'll blow your mind. The power switch uses a nice rotary dial that's easy to adjust and keep from getting bumped to make power off and sound level adjustments easy. Underneath the power button is a standard 3.5 millimeter jack to connect in PTTs or whatever extra comms you may wanna do. Now looking at the price, these were like 38 or $39, but just be aware that I think Multicam and Multicam Alpine were like 80. So be aware you can pay more than double the price just for a different pattern on the side. I mean, really, for 40 bucks, just spray paint the side of these if you want something else. <laughs> they're, they're not that expensive if you mess it up. Now, for noise reduction rating, these are actually rated at 22 NRR, 
which is very interesting and maybe different from what most people believe as these are the same noise level reduction that we see on the thousand dollar plus like amps and contacts. I think most people do assume that when you pay 20 times the cost, you get more hearing protection, but it's actually the same. And at 22 NRR, these work perfectly fine outside. I would just use these as they are, but using them indoors, I would, as with all the others, I would double these up to get a little bit better hearing protection. I'm curious how these headsets do, particularly at $35. So we'll do the same test we did before where I'll test it in my yard, and just in a quiet space. So you can hear the voice transmission through the headset. And then we'll also test ambient sound, like go test it at an intersection. And as we did before, same thing, I won't do any audio cleanup. So you're just gonna get the pure sound as it comes through the headset. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. I've also moved the mic inside the headset so you can hear me talk through it as I move to the end of the review so you can hear more of the audio sound than just a couple small clips, but I will put all the clips to all the different headsets at the end of the video also. So there is a little bit of ear interference coming from the actual wireless mic, so this is probably something you won't normally experience, but if you do hear that buzzing, that's what that's coming from. I'm gonna try and keep this covered so it doesn't buzz. Now, with most of these headsets, you're not gonna hear anything over ambient volume. That's pretty much the maximum you're gonna get because most of these companies wanna market you and, and, and upsell you on the higher tier model so you can get a volume level that's gonna be above ambient. That's just kind of the way their pitch works. Like we mentioned in the other video though, it's kind of silly because we're really just talking about you know, high school electronics at this level. But I will say that being one of the cheapest out of all the headsets today, I think they really do have probably the top three in terms of sound reproduction quality. For that reason, I placed the Howard Light Impact Sports solidly in that B to C tier. The features are pretty bland, but the headset overall is compact with a price point and sound quality that lets it compete with headsets uh, 10 times its cost. It's pretty obvious why the Howard Lights gain so much popularity. These are just fantastic for the price and these would be just wonderful for a family member or someone getting into firearms or just to have these as a, as a spare set out on the range. Now let's put these away and do another one. And this is the Axel Tracker, Tracker. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys here. These, these are not good. First off, it's gonna look like deja vu as it's like the McDonald's eating fat brother to the impact sports we just saw. Hell, I think it's even the same battery door. But I digress. The headband here is a more cloth style material that is actually nicely padded this time. And again, we see the connectors use the same push through style. Much like it's copycat original though, connecting these into your headset would require you to destroy the headband to get all your cords free. I'm not gonna lie to you though. If you had like a bump helmet, a PDW and a set of these axles. I just immediately assume that you're out there competing for shill of the year. As noted, the headset itself is super bloated. Now that nice low profile of the Impact Sport is huge and these look just ridiculous. The front speaker is the same large covered microphone on either side, but oddly it does just horrible at blocking wind. The battery cover as noted is a direct copy with the same rubberized battery door cover. The ear padding included is just basic, but it does seem a lot less plasticky and does have a lot more padding material. Looking at the power switch, we see, oh, good Lord, the same exact power control just rotated 90 degrees. This does still work well, and I think I honestly like it better in this configuration, but, but come on. The tracker does also have a 3.5 millimeter jack along the bottom also for comms. Now we gotta get to some of the fun stuff that I have to mention, uh, particularly whoever is pricing these is a total asshole. Let me explain what I'm saying. I looked all these up a couple months ago just to see you know, all the different ones I could afford for this video and, and what we could put together for you. And when I looked these up, I don't know, they were like, I don't know, 50, $55. Then I go to buy them and uh, there's a Black Friday, buy one, get one free sale. I mean, that sounds great, right? Nope. They changed the price of one set for their sale, if you want to call it that, to $100. 
but hilariously, you can still buy them for $50 at any of the partner websites. So their buy one, get one price is just their normal price to trick you into buying two. They even changed the Amazon listing to update it for the newer price model, but I was able to go backwards and find my old listing and find the lower price. And I think I got these for like 40 or $45, which is super annoying. Let me tell you another super annoying bit though. As I understand it, those YouTubers who push these out to people also make about a 30% commission on these. So that means they're making about $15 every time they sell one of these guys at $50 a pop. Now, if it's a good product, then who cares? You know, they're helping you know about a good product on the market. But these are, these are fantastic. We bad. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. Oh, they're so, oh, they just sound, can you hear that? They just sound so bad. I can't understand how these are more expensive than the Impact Sports when they sound like the worst headset I've, I've ever listened to. The Axle team also uses kind of a deceptive SNR rating instead of the NRR, so they, they tout it as 25 SNR, but in reality, that still translates over exactly to the same as the others as a 21 or 22 NRR rating. So still would be fine outside, still need to double up indoors. And oddly, both sets of Chinese headsets that we've seen and reviewed in the same setup pulled the same doo-doo trick. Plus they come with these super sketch Raymax, what the hell? Raymax batteries. Oh, oh, let's see if the Impact Sport cover fits. Yes, yes, it, it fits exactly. That's, that's crazy. Good Lord, I'm gonna see if I can, I'll put some captions at the bottom. But they do this other crazy thing that whenever there's a loud sound, instead of just not playing the sound as loud in the headset, it just cuts off the sound entirely so you can't hear anything. They're great. I had to take those off. The Axle Tracker is just a shill dream and it's just an oversized copy of a good product that does everything as poorly as possible. For that reason, I placed the Tracker in F tier. This is total and complete garbage. Now, here's where I leave it to you guys though. If you see your favorite YouTuber complaining about shills uh, and then wearing a set of these, well, well, now wouldn't it be interesting if you left a comment just uh, pointing out some of the irony, but don't make anybody mad. You guys do what you want. Ultimately though, the axles just scream slimy marketing and the product, well, well, it sucks. Now though, there is a headset that all of you recommended I try out, and I was super impressed by these ones, and these are the Peltor Range Guards. Just at first glance, the Range Guards are impressive as they're one of the least expensive, but also the thinnest of the entire group. Looking at the headband, we see a nice textured faux leather that has a good grip to it. The headband itself seems like the same angled metal to keep its shape, but it does seem to have a bit more padding than the Howard Lights, but not a lot. The headband connection is obviously the Comtac style, as these are also made by Peltor, but again, the headband isn't removed easily, so you'd likely need to cut this off to add them to your headset. Now, I won't lie to you, seeing these on like a bump helmet setup would tell me that, hey, you're probably on a budget, but you also know what the hell you're doing. Well, hold on, caveat that. Not like the hard-headed veteran helmet, because then, then all of that goes straight out the window. As I noted, the range guards are the slimmest of the bunch and have an incredible form factor. We see a large microphone and speaker design similar to the X300 that I like so much. For the battery compartment, there's a slimline design in the middle of the left ear to hide the slot for the two AAA batteries. As we move to the pads, gone are the cheapo plastic and you have the same padded ear cups you again see in the higher end X300 and X500s. These do pop right out if you wanna upgrade these to Comtax or other style gel cups also. For power control, there is a side knob that acts as both the on, off, and volume control, just like the others. And there's a recessed 3.5 millimeter jack to protect the leads of your PTT or other comms devices. Now I do wish the power control had a bit more resistance as I think these would be pretty easy to bump and change. 
but overall, I'm pretty wowed by these range guards just straight off the bat. I'm pretty sure these were like $40 or $45 too, so they're right in line with price with the Howard Light Impact Sports and the Walker Razors. And I think they also, yeah, they did have a pretty solidly similar uh, 21 NRR rating on these also. So like all the others, these would do just perfectly fine outdoors all by themselves, but I do recommend doubling up when you go indoors. Now, all of you guys raved about these, so let's go test audio performance. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. I am completely blown away, and right now you guys are listening through the headset, like with the mic and everything routed through, and I have no doubt it sounds absolutely phenomenal. For this price tier, I mean, I think it's a couple bucks more than the cheapest on our list, this, this quality is just insane. So with its low cost and same insane performance of its contact brother up at the high tier, I placed the range guard between S and A tier. I know I'm gonna catch a whole lot of crap about that rating, and I don't really like Peltor at all as a brand, but these are just, they're holy crap good. The only reason I'm not putting these in S tier is because number one, they only come in gray, and number two, there's no integrated down leader mic. But I'm telling you, if somebody were to spend, you know, $100 or $200 to add in a mic and a down lead, man, you would have something absolutely bonkers going on here. And that's what Peltor should be working on. Instead, we have the Comtac 7s with like Bluetooth that are like $3,000. There's no better money than fleecing taxpayers, I guess. But big thanks to all of you viewers. These range guards are absolutely fantastic. And these are no doubt going in my bag as my primary backup. Now though, let's try another proven one that I've had for forever with the Walker Razor Slims. I got these bad boys like 15 years ago during my Cryptek Highlander era. But as the name suggests, the Walker Razors have a nice, slim, and compact overall design. The headband uses a more fabric type along the top, but has the same molded metal to retain the head shape. Unlike many of the others, though, the Razor Slims have a lot of padding along the inside. The connection system uses a screw attachment, and I'm sure people have connected these into a helmet, but I don't know, it seems like a pain. As with the others, you'd need to destroy the headband to change the configuration, so it isn't that all that ideal anyway. As noted, the Razor is designed around that slim idea, and I think it does it well. There are two microphones along the front that use a metal mesh to cover the microphone. Looking at the ear pads, we see the same plasticky material with very little padding that's almost identical to the Impact Sports. Hidden on top of the right ear cup is the battery compartment that holds the two AAA batteries. The power control is on the left and uses the same knob design to control power and volume. We also see a 3.5 millimeter jack, but this time with a waterproof cover to protect the headset. Like most people, I got these when I was starting out. I, I really didn't know what was good and what to buy, and it was pretty much all I could afford at the time. Okay, sorry, I have to go back. These are actually the cheapest of the entire lot at $35. I didn't realize the price had gone down so much because I, I think I bought these like a decade ago. Now the NRR rating of these is only 20. And at this point, you're starting to sacrifice a little bit more of that, you know, saving a little bit of money, but you're sacrificing some of that sound protection. And at 20, I'm starting to tell you that you probably want to double up your hearing protection, both indoors and outdoors. So you are starting to get a bit of a trade-off with saving some money, but let's see how they do in the audio performance realm. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. I think it uses the same technology as the Impact Sports because it's getting the same feedback, so I'll cover this up. And hilariously, it doesn't sound all that bad for $35. I mean, it's better than the actual Shill R's, which, which is absolutely hilarious. I mean, it's only $35, right? You're not really getting anything with quality, and you likely got these at Cabela's anyway. That's, I mean, that's what I did. 
The Walker razors come in a low profile and cut cost significantly, but at the heart of those cuts are the NRR rating and sound reproduction. For that reason, I placed the Walker Razor Slims in C tier. It is kind of nuts that you pay like five bucks more than these and you get the range guards that are floating up there in that A and S tier. Plus, in a bit of hilarity, the range guards are significantly thinner than the razors. But for a starter headset, these are fine and they certainly won't break the bank. But I really do think that when you buy a set of these, you're eventually gonna just buy something else anyway. So it may be better to look at some other options. All right, let's get these out of here. And next we have an all new one with the Ultrex, I think I'm saying that right, Bluetooth Bionic Fuse. I had to look up the name, I forgot it. Here we see a bit more of a full featured headset with quad mics and Bluetooth, and the price does jump up a bit. With the headband, we do see a bump up in quality with a nice outer fabric. We see the same bent metal to keep the shape, but a solid upgrade in terms of padding and a nice soft pleather material on the inside. The headsets use the clip-in style we saw before, so you may need a unique solution to add this to your headset. But just like all the others, the headband would need to be destroyed to free all the wires anyway. As a change though, we don't see a battery compartment and instead have an internal battery with a USB-C cover to charge these. We also see those four microphones instead of two with the same metal mesh cover on the Razer Slims. Looking at the ear cup, this is the first set we've seen with gel cups straight out of the box. Gel cups are usually like $40 if you wanna make this upgrade. So to have it included is pretty awesome to see. For me personally, gel cups give you some bonus points for sure. The Bionic Fuse also has Bluetooth control so you can connect in your phone or other devices while you're at the range. For comparison, Axel does also offer the tracker in Bluetooth for $160. Now I just noticed too, it looks like the Bluetooth one is the old model that's like the mass made Chinese one, which was even worse than this one when we tested it. What is going on over there? Back on the Fuse, we now see a power on indicator for the first time and a similar knob as the others that function as the on, off, and volume control. At $100, you're getting a pretty crazy deal with quad mics, Bluetooth, and everything else. But outside of the gel cups, I just want you to make sure that you're using all the features. Like, make sure you're actually gonna use the Bluetooth because you're gonna pay extra for it, and there's no point in doing that if you're not actually gonna use that function. Now, if you work somewhere loud, like in a factory or whatever, it would be cool to have a set of hearing protection and then still be able to connect your phone in and be able to listen to music or whatever else you wanted to. I mean, I've used these for exactly that with like mowing the lawn and whatnot, but let's see how these do in actual sound reproduction. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. So the fuse is a little bit tricky. <laughs> it's mess messing with me already because it does good at sound reproduction, but it's, it's weird. I think that's because it's using the four mics to catch in all the sound that's around me, but then it's only using a single like speaker on the inside of the headset to reproduce the sound of the four microphones. Like, can you hear that? You can hear all that, <laughs> all the ambient sound. It's just so hard to explain. It's like if you were to put like four mics all around your house and then replayed all those mics through just like a, like a TV. It sounds fine. It's just lacking, I guess, any sort of depth as both close and far sounds. They all sound like they're the same distance away. With the quad mics, power indicator, and Bluetooth, the Fuse really pushes the envelope on features but the sound recreation of the four mics can be kind of disorienting on where the sound is even coming from. For that reason, I placed the Bionic Fuse solidly in B tier. You guys sound off if you can help me out. I, I don't know what exactly the Fuse is missing. I think it just really needs some sort of multi-directional speaker or something like that. That would, I think having that would really bump this into that A or S tier and it would be pretty good. I will caveat though and say it is nice to see a new contender into the headset realm. And it, I think it's done pretty well for their first attempt at a headset. I mean, I mean, look at the axle. <laughs> Certainly could do worse. 
But that's our last headset, and I hope this video showing you all the different budget headsets was useful in your purchasing decisions so you can see where you can kind of spend your money and get the most bang for your buck if you're looking to just get the best range headset you could possibly get for the cheapest cost. And if for some reason you just skip to the end of the video for this part, it's the Peltor Range Guard by, by like a long shot. I wanna say thanks to all of our YouTube and Patreon members. You make it possible where I can test all these out, get a hold of all these headsets, and then come back to you and tell you what's worth your money. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what your favorite headset is and why it's the Peltor Range Guard. Let's do a mid-range one, so, so tell me some other headsets you guys wanna see. All right, though, wash out. You guys had to know these were coming back. Now, the interesting part is, as I'm recording this, I don't actually know how bad these sound, but, like, the sound, like, just the headset is, like, popping and crackling as I'm talking. So, I, I can only imagine how great it sounds. Uh, something's working on next. Oh, I'm doing some medical stuff. So, we're going to be um, ranking some different medical kits. That's something I haven't done well in the past. We've just shown you medical kits, but we haven't given you a good ranking of, like, what's quality and what's not. I have a whole bunch that have shown up. <laughs> So I can't, I can't focus. These sounds, these sounds so bad. Uh, what's after that? Oh, I have the new Bull Ultralight. So I'm going to show that to you. I'm just waiting for some pieces to come in. And I'm going to be playing with the Primer Arms PLXC and this crazy, crazy, I'll see if I can put a picture up, uh, the MASP 6mm arc setup. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, so guys, I can't listen to these headsets anymore. I got, I got to return these. These are, these are absolutely horrible. All right. <laughs> you guys gotta go. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback. This is a test of headset audio quality in a quiet space, so you can hear the differences in voice playback.